Welcome to the Sunday Word with Minister Anthony Smith. Yes, it's another Tuesday evening that I am doing the Sunday Word. But don't worry, we'll get back on track. I know I keep saying that, and some of you are probably wondering when. The only thing that should matter is when this word and this podcast is dropped that you get it. But yes, we will get on track. As a matter of fact, Lord's will, I plan to pre-record my show because this is that time of year when you think your church calendar is closed you end up with engagements as was our the case this past Sunday we had to be in service on an annual day at a sister church of ours so sometimes those things get in the way of me keeping the schedule but this week Lord's when I plan on getting back on schedule I also want to say that I was fortunate enough to rebrand the Sermons from the Vault, which is a collection of sermons from my dad, the late Pastor Luther E. Smith. In addition, not only will I be putting his sermons out there, I ran across some more sermons from our simultaneous revival. I believe it was the 23rd annual, sometime around there. So I got a few of those, so I'm going to add those in the vault collection too. But the majority, 98, at least 98, 99.5% will be sermons from my dad. But like I said, I found some tapes from the simultaneous revival. So I just want to let you know when that come out. I uh, want to say a special thanks. Y'all see my design on my uh, Sunday Word podcast. Well, the same person that did that design did the one for the sermons from the vault. You know, oftentimes we run into these businesses. They rebrand their logo. And I just thought it was time for a change. I want the picture on the logo to be more about my dad and less about me, even though my picture is on there. But it's more about him and the legacy that he has left behind in spreading the gospel. So today's word, we're coming out of the book of Psalms 34, verses 1 through 10. It's the Psalm of David when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, who drove him away and he departed. Starting with verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him, and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and... The Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him and delivereth them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. And tonight we're going to simply talk about praise and thanksgiving. And the title of this psalm tells us both who penned it and upon what occasion it was penned. David, being forced to flee from his country, which was made too hot for him by the rage of Saul, sought shelter as near as he could in the land of the Philistines. There it was soon discovered who he was, and he was brought before the king, who in the narrative is called Achish, the proper name, his proper name. Here Abimelech, his title, and lest he should be treated as a spy, a one that came thither upon design, he feigned himself to be a madman. Such there have been in every age, that even by idiots, men might be taught to give God thanks for the use of their reason, that Achish might dismiss him as a contemptible man, rather than take cognizance of him as a dangerous man, and it had the effect he desired by his stratagem he escaped the hand that otherwise would have handled him roughly 
Now, one, we cannot justify David in his dissimulation. It ill became an honest man to feign himself to be what he was not, and a man of honor to feign himself to be a fool and a madman. If in sport we mimic those who have not so good an understanding as we think we have, we forget that God might have made their case ours. Two, yet we cannot but wonder at the composure of his spirit and how far he was formed, how far he was from any change of that when he changed his behavior. Even when he was in that fright or rather in that danger only, his heart was so fixed, trusting in God, that even then he penned this excellent song, which has as much in it of the marks of a calm, sedate spirit as any psalm in the book, in all the book, and there is something curious too in the composition. For it is what is called an alphabetical psalm. That is a psalm in which every verse begins with each letter in its order as it stands in the Hebrew alphabet. Happy are those who can tr thus keep his, their temper and keep their graces in exercise even when they are tempted to change their behavior. In this former part of the Psalms, first, David engages and excites himself to praise God. Though it was his fault that he changed his behavior, yet it was God's mercy that he escaped, and the mercy was so much the greater in that God did not deal with him according to the desert of his dissimulation, and we must in everything give God thanks. Notice there, it said, though it was his fault that he changed his behavior, yet it was God's mercy that he escaped, and the mercy was so much greater in that God did not deal with him according. Think about some of our offenses that we have caused. All the more reason right along in that little paragraph right there, we should be raising our hands and pray and praising God and shouting to God that he doesn't deal with us accordingly. Think about some of them secret sins that we have committed. That we call ourselves hiding from people that God sees. If God was to judge us on those secret sins of ours, mm, is all I can say. Mm. So right, right along there, we ought to be thanking God that he doesn't deal with us accordingly. Thank God for his grace and his mercy. I'm going to go back through that once again. It says, first, David engages and excites himself to praise God. Though it was his fault that he changed his behavior, yet it was God's mercy that he escaped. And the mercy was so much the greater in that God did not deal with him according to the desert of his dissimulation. And we must in everything give thanks. He resolves, one, that he will praise God constantly. I will bless the Lord at all times upon all occasions. He resolves to keep up stated times for his duty to lay hold of all opportunities for it and to renew his praises upon every fresh occurrence that furnished him with matter. If we hope to spend our eternity in praising God, it is fit that we should spend as much as may be our time in this work. Secondly, that he will praise him openly. His praise shall continually be in his mouth. Thus, he would show how forward he was to own his obligations to the mercy of God and how desirous to make others also sensible of theirs. Thirdly, that he will praise him heartily. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord in my relation to him, my interest in him and expectations from him. It is not vain glory to the glory of God. So what I'm going to do right here, I am going to take a break. 
And when I come back, we will get on down through this praise and thanksgiving here on the Sunday Word with Minister Anthony Smith. Welcome back to the Sunday Word with Mr. Anthony Smith as we are looking at Psalms 34, a psalm that was penned by David. And I like the way it starts when it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. This praise shall continue to be in my mouth. You know, I, I tend to, and you can say it's either done intentionally or unintentionally it just depends on how you feel about it but when i am conducting the service or you may call it mc in the service or whatever you call it my go-to scriptures when i read the scripture right before the altar called is either psalms 100 or psalms 150 which in that instance i'm encouraging the congregation that you made it into the sanctuary it's okay to praise the Lord. It's okay to lift up your voices. It's okay to make noise in the sanctuary. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. How can you praise the Lord with your mouth closed? And I know there was an old hymn. My dad used to sing it. He or he, I don't know if it, he may have just put it in there. He said, but if I couldn't say nothing, I would at least wave my hand. Well, some people, they don't say nothing, and some don't even wave their hand. And then quote this right here. Let the redeem of the Lord say, well, you're, right, you're in trouble right there because you haven't said nothing that would convince me that God is good to you because you're silent and you're not showing no sign. Let me conclude that scripture. It says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you've been redeemed, you ought to show some sign. People ought to see a difference in you. People ought to see by your actions, by your speech, by how you treat your fellow man. There sh if you've been redeemed, you should show some sign. Anyway, let me get caught. Oh, mm, hey. See that 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 word will stir you up. And let me also give my this time. I know you hear me saying one, two, three. Th this is broken down into outlines. So that was like the first the first part was the introduction. The second part was the first outline. We're going into the second outline, and you will hear me first or saying one, two. So if you're wondering what these what I'm counting, I'm looking. I'm I got my notes here and I got my outlines. So. This, let me give you that disclaimer. So we're going to the second outline. He calls upon others to join with him herein. See, that's that's all I'm doing. I'm encouraging others to come on. We're in God's house. Let's praise the Lord together. Let's let the people on the outside know that there's something going on on the inside. He expects they will. Psalms 30.2. The humble shall hear there are both of my deliverance. And of my thankfulness, and be glad that a good man has such has so much favor shown him, and a good God so much honor done him. Those have most comfort in God's mercy, both to others and to themselves, that are humble and have the least confidence in their own merit and sufficiency. It pleased David to think that God's favors to him would rejoice the heart of every Israelite. 
three things he would have us all to concur with him in one in great and high thoughts of God, which we should express in magnifying him and exalting his name. In other words, lifting up his name, Psalms 34 and 3. We cannot make God greater or higher than he is, but if we adore him as infinitely great and higher than the highest, he is pleased to reckon this magnifying and exalting him. This we must do together. God's praises sound best in concert, for so we praise him as the angels do in heaven. Those that share in God's favor, as all the saints do, should concur in his praises, and we should be as desirous of the assistance of our friends in returning thanks for mercies as in praying for them. We have reason to join in thanksgiving to God. For his readiness to hear prayer, which all the saints have had the comfort of, for he never said to any of them, speak you me in vain. David, for his part, will give it under his hand that he has found him a prayer hearing God. Psalms 34 and 4. He says, I sought the Lord in my distress, entreated his favor, begged his help, and he heard me answered my request immediately. He's an on-time God, isn't he? And delivered me from all my fears, both from the death I feared and from the disquietude and disturbance produced by fear of it. The former he does by his providence working for us, the latter by his grace working in us to silence our fears and steal the tumult of the spirits, this latter is the greater mercy of the two, because the thing we fear is our trouble only, but our unbelieving distrustful fear of it is our sin. Nay, it is often more our torment to than the thing itself would be, which perhaps would only touch the bone and the flesh, while the fear would prey upon the spirits and put us out of the possession of our own soul. David's prayers helped to silence his fears. Having sought the Lord and left his case with him, he could wait the event with great composure. But David was a great and eminent man. We may not expect to be favored as he was. Have any others ever experienced the like benefit by prayer? Yes. Secondly, many besides him have looked unto God's unto God by faith and prayer and have been lightened by it, Psalms 34 and 5. It was wonderfully revived and comforted them. Witness Hannah, who then sh she had prayed, went her way, and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. When we look to the world, we are darkened, we are perplexed, and at a loss. But when we look to God, from Him we have the light, both of direction and joy. And our way is made both plain and pleasant. They're here, all, they're here spoken of that looked unto God and had their expectations raised and the event did not frustrate them. Their faces were not ashamed of their confidence, but perhaps they also were persons of great eminence like David himself and upon that account were highly favored. Or their numbers made them considerable, nay. And thirdly, this poor man cried, a single person, mean and inconsiderable, whom no man looked upon with any respect or looked after with any concern. Yet he was as welcome to the throne of grace as David or any of, of any of his worthies. The Lord heard him, took cognizance of his case, and of his prayers and save him out of all his troubles. Psalms 34 and 6. God will regard the prayer of the destitute. Psalms 102 and 17. And also see Isaiah 57 and 15. So what I want to do right here. I'm going to bring this to an end. But I will actually. This will be one of the first things I've done is. I am going to conclude this. This will be on the next recording, which will be 
aired on Sunday. Praise and thanksgiving. I want to thank you for tuning in to the Sunday Word with Minister Anthony Smith. And I pray that what I've given you this night is a blessing to you. And if it is a blessing to you, bless others with it as well, too. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, I know many of you do not have Spotify. Many of you do not have iHeart. So if you really want to hear this podcast, there is an app called Spreaker. That's spelled S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. It's like speaker with an extra R in it. S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. And you can search The Sunday Word with Minister Anthony Smith. And I have some other podcasts on there. If you're a sports fan, I have my uh, In The Zone Sports Podcast. And you will also be able to find Sermons from the Vault as well. So I just want to let share that with you. Like I say, that app is free. It doesn't cost you anything. No monthly subscriptions. Just for your listening pleasure, if you want to find my podcast, that's where you can find those at. So once again, be blessed. Be a blessing. I'm out of here. Hope you enjoyed it.